Thank you, Mr. Speaker. How are you doing, friends? I'm going to clarify two things. First of all, the principal justification from opponent bench is very pragmatic. If they can successfully minimize the number of casualties, they can justify the usage of specific types of weaponry. So if we can counterprove that, pragmatically speaking, we can, if we aggrandize the scale of warfare and increase the number of victims, then we can uh, disprove the principal justification from the other side of the house. Secondly, there, there are many responsible, irresponsible responses from opposition bench that there's a lacuna in account of international law. We can't prosecute uh, non-human beings like uh, drones and private military contract contractors and autonomous weaponers, weaponry as well. Their response is, let's change the status quo, let's change the law. We can't do that. That is why many problems are happening right now in the status quo. And we have to be responsible for the social reality and how the weapon is actually operationalized in a warfare. And that's our response. Because of the current lacuna, which is very infeasible to fix, that there are there are many abuses happened in the case of Blackwater in Iraq and the US actually take, took advantage of it. The exactly the same kind of problem are likely to occur. Therefore, we have to be responsible and err on the side of caution. And that is our position. Based on that, I'm going to examine and answer two questions. One, do we really minimize the casualty? Secondly, can we really extend the principle of international law onto the usage of this kind of weaponry based on the inherent nature of the robots? First question, do we really minimize the casualty? Because as my partner Maria explained, like, who has what kind of incentive for uh, what kind of purposes? The only, you know, uh, uh, there are, uh, I think, three scenarios that happened in this way. First of all, the non-state actors, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't see much responses from the other side of the house about the leaking of uh, this kind of information. No, thank you. And the op open opposition said that we do not allow uh, rogue institutions rogue state or a terrorist institution to access this kind of technology. No state has incentive to support this rebellious institution in a conflict like Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, or Tamir Taiga in, uh, let's say, uh, 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 Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. <laughs> Just like that, usually these rebellious or terrorist institutions are supported by government institutions in order to enforce diplomatic and geopolitical, in uh, geopolitical interests. And therefore, this kind of local and regional war oftentimes turn out to be a uh, proxy warfare. And that, here comes the importance and seriousness of use of this kind of robots. They say the superpowers are trustable. No, superpowers are the country that are trying to oppress small and medium-sized countries in order to expand the territorial disputes or in order to expand the diplomatic and geopolitical interests. In that specific context, it's very likely that the robot, is, robot autonomous weapons are likely to be uh, to, to take an advantage of these superpowers in order to exacerbate their pre-existing interests. Secondly, about the P5. They, they innocently believe that P5 is a legitimate state actor. No, Russia uh, oppressed Belarus or um, undertook intervention into Crimea or Georgia. China is doing that for Tibet and Hong Kong and Spratly Islands. These P5 and exactly the countries are trying to uh, trying to abuse and uh, leverage the the power of uh, autonomous weaponry in order to enhance and in order to sort of highlight their political and geopolitical interests. In that specific context, we agree that current system is not perfect to defend a small and medium-sized country, but just because the current system is not perfect, it doesn't automatically mean that we have justification to aggrandize the imperfection of the status quo and its unfair position. The solution should be to minimize those uh, disparities as much as possible by having negotiation or international conference, which is impossible when the countries are able to, you know, uh, circumvent humanitarian costs and casually start and wage warfare against other nations. Final about necessary war. I think they are talking about humanitarian intervention. They say the problem in the status quo is it takes a long time for people to agree any consensus, reach a consensus. But that's good. We need to have long and careful discussion about what constitutes humanitarian intervention. Because what constitutes supreme humanitarian crisis is very subjective. We are not sure whether the situation in Syria is worthy of military action. We are not sure whether the situation in Libya was worthy of a humanitarian intervention or actual military in invasion. Therefore, it's very important that we are facing the cost of our humanitarian resources and have a long discussion and check and balance mechanism to make sure that humanitarian intervention is transparently executed rather than just quick position. The reason why the intervention into uh, Somalia was uh, chaotic and failure was because they took very quick action about it. 
they didn't have much uh, checking balance mechanism beforehand, and that was the cause of the failure. Then later, then people uh, suddenly reached this brutalization of their members or their like colleagues and uh, U.S. soldiers, and they just made the decision to stop it and withdraw it. And that kind of chaotic situation is far more likely to happen when you skip all these pro procedures and desensitize public about the costs that they are paying for the warfare. And that is dangerous uh, strategy. Moving on to the final argumentation about the principle. I right, go ahead. So why check and balance system that exists in the domestic and international community is suddenly disappearing under your side of the house? Uh, first of all, because we can't prosecute those who actually commit atrocity and atrocity in warfare. Their response is we can prosecute the soldiers who push the button. No, we are talking about autonomous weapons, as close in opposition explained. Autonomous weapon think on its own and act on its own, right? We, it's not controlled by anybody, and that's a unique nature and inherent nature of autonomous weaponry. That is why we can't prosecute anybody under um, uh, under their scenario, right? They say it's contradictory. It's like if we assume that someone is controlling autonomous weaponry, then that someone is savage and has like human extinct, as the opposition explained. That that kind of panic individuals are controlling autonomous weaponry. If that if that's the scenario that they defend, then the ferocity of war crimes anyway happens under their side of the house. So we have to reasonably assume that autonomous weaponaries are autonomous, not necessarily controlled by anybody in the remote areas. Therefore, we can't prosecute anyone, even if civilians are brutalized, journalists are brutalized, the place of worship are brutalized, religious sites are brutalized and destroyed, and the hospital and medical institutions are destroyed. We can't prosecute and convict anybody. Why we can prosecute under our side of the house? Because we have court martial. The government and the regime or Ministry of Defense have incentive to prosecute and punish those who commit crimes in warfare. Otherwise, there's a public opposition. The president cannot win the next election. The minister, the, the minister will be fired in the next cabinet. They have a strong political incentive to make sure that this kind of thing will never happen. When the, the, the soldier from Netherlands committed violence in PKO, then the regime in uh, Netherlands uh, got, got dissolved because of the public pressure and criticism for that. Uh, we have that level of incentive under our model on court martial mechanism or international law, which cannot be extended to the specific scenario that they are supporting this debate. That's why we principally oppose. Thank you. Thank you for the speech. I'd like all of the